Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. You are in for a treat today because I have a very, very exciting thrift flip video for you guys. Now, something I've been noticing about myself lately is that my urge to go thrifting has been increasing so much every single week. I've been loving to go thrifting even more than the week prior, which sounds so strange, but I think it is because my personal kind of interior design style or just my overall design aesthetic has kind of been changing to be a bit more of a vintage eclectic mix, which I've been loving so much. And in order to achieve that kind of a look, you kind of have to either go to antique stores stores or thrift stores and we don't got the time for an antique store or the money so we're going to the thrift store to find some great bargain deals and hopefully flip them and transform them into some great new pieces so as many of you guys know my parents actually moved to Arizona and I wanted to go see them in their new home so this past weekend I drove five hours to Arizona and I visited them for the weekend it was really really fun and just like a relaxing weekend in general but we also hit up a couple of thrift stores while there and I can tell you guys right now that the thrift stores in Arizona are incredible first thing is that the two good that I ended up going to were super, super, super clean. Like I cannot tell you guys, there was not one item out of place in this thrift store. And on top of that, the prices were immaculate. They were a fraction of the price of Los Angeles thrift stores. So all around, it was a really great experience. And I picked up some incredible pieces which are sitting around me right now that we are going to be flipping today. So if you are not already, make sure to subscribe to my channel. I post brand new home decor and DIY content every single week. And also click that bell icon and next to the subscribe button. That way you are notified when I upload brand new videos. But let's hop into our first flip. So the first item that I picked up was this wooden bowl here. Now I saw this when I was walking by and I kind of looked at it and I was like, that's a really cool wooden bowl, but I don't really know what I want to do with it. So I passed it up. And when I was leaving, I literally was like, wait, mother, I need to go get that bowl. So I ran back and I got it because I just loved the organic shape of the top. And I also absolutely loved the color. I thought this color was so pretty. It's like a dark, warm toned stain. Now this right here, I would say was the most unreasonably priced item I bought. It was $7.49, which is not a bad price at all but I do feel like a bowl like this should typically be about like four or five dollars so for $7.49 I couldn't pass that up because lamp pendants are expensive and I have a great spot in my place that I want to put this in in the breakfast nook and I think it's gonna look incredible so let's see how I transform this piece this first project here is definitely the easiest out of all of them, and you can recreate this with absolutely any wooden bowl that you have. So what I did was I grabbed a 1 and 5 8 inch drill bit, and I'm going to be drilling through the bottom side of the bowl to create a hole that is large enough for our light string to go through, but not too large to where it kind of goes all the way through. So I took this process pretty slowly, drilling a hole all the way through. It looks a little bit crazy there, but guys, I swear to you, it was very, very simple, and I just knocked off the dust, inserted my light cord, which my personal one was from Ikea, and then all you have to do is just screw in your light bulb and that finishes off your hanging light pendant. Super simple and very cute. Now the next item I got is a big one. It's also a very heavy one and it is this humongous frame right here you guys i cannot believe i found such a pretty frame this was 24 dollars. it's one of those very ornate vintage style frames however this one is in more of a dark bronze color and it has a lot of wear and tear there's kind of orange popping through in some sections there's gray paint in some sections all around it definitely needs a little bit of tlc for sure but that is exactly what i want to do with it today now this is actually about 24 by 36 inches which i personally think is a very large frame and i have have the most perfect space in this room when I do my room makeover where I want to put this frame and I am so happy to have found this for only 24 bucks I thought that was a great deal for such a large frame so let's get into making this piece over <music> I have to say that this frame transformation is probably one of my favorites I have ever done on my channel and you guys are probably going to see why in just a minute here. So I flipped the frame over and I actually wanted to remove the original art that was inside. So I just popped out all those little staple sections, removed the artwork and also the piece of glass. Now what makes this process super simple is using antique gold rub and buff. Now if you do want more of an actual brassy yellow color, I don't suggest the antique gold color. This one almost has like a rosy tint to it, but it's super pretty in the end. I love the way that it turned out and it actually makes the process very simple. At first, I was like, oh, should I just spray paint this? But I really wanted to maintain some of those dark areas like on the inside of like the filigree corner sections. And I figured the best way to do this would be to hand paint the entire frame using this rub and buff. And that is exactly what I did. It was actually very simple and only took about maybe 30 to 45 minutes to paint the whole thing. But I made sure to hit every single nook and cranny. And I love how you can see through some of those filigree sections to the darker areas just to add a bit more to dimension and not finish off the frame. Now 
this next item is probably my favorite find that I found because I was looking for something very similar to this and when I saw it, it was exactly what I had pictured in my head. It is a very bulbous, oversized, large table lamp. Now there was a lamp that Anthropology just recently introduced to their website. It was in collaboration with Amber Interiors and it was such a stunning ceramic table lamp like this one um, and it sold out right away. It was such a popular piece, I believe, that they had sold on their site and I was like, that is so pretty. However, I don't want to pay for it nor it's, I can't even pay for it. It's freaking sold out. So I was like, let's create our own. So I found this lamp here. It was $6.49 at Goodwill and it's just the perfect shape to do exactly what I wanted to do with it. And I also was able to find a stunning lampshade for only $3.50. This is in perfect condition and it will go great with the lamp. So if I can pull this off, this total lamp, like the cost of it, will probably be about 15 bucks with all the supplies. So let's see if I'm able to pull this off. Unlike the last two projects, this one does have a couple more steps. However, the outcome is perfect. You guys are gonna love this one. So I started off with a little bit of clay here and I'm just gonna be rolling these out into like probably about an inch wide log. I'm actually gonna be recreating the handles that were on the original Anthropology one. I wanted to have them on this one as well and I figured that cutting out some clay or I guess rolling out some clay and then cutting them into a handle shape, molding them on the side of the lamp as you could see here and kind of just pressing them on and then smoothing out the edges, trying to create a seamless finish with the side of the lamp but do keep in mind that we are going to be peeling these off that way we can bake them so you do not want to press them on super hard just try to press them down enough to where you can kind of get the form of the side of the lamp but you can still pull it off and it's not going to like you know stay stuck on there so I did that on both sides here and I would say that I cut off about eight inch strips of clay that were about an inch wide into circular logs and then I smoothed them out as you can see here just pulling it off the lamp setting it onto some parchment paper and we are going to then be baking this in at the oven and just following the clay's instructions. Now, do keep in mind that this is quite thick, so I did bake this for about 30 minutes or so to get a nice hardened finish. Once those cooled down, I grabbed my crazy glue and I'm adding a generous amount onto the handle and I'm going to then go ahead and press it onto the side of our lamp here. Now, in the baking process of the clay, it does kind of warp a little bit, so they weren't perfectly attached to the side. This left one looks really great. However, on the right one, I did add hot glue to any area that didn't connect the lamp just to kind of fill it in and make sure that it looked seamless on the side of the lamp. That way, when we paint it with our paint mixture, which you can see that I'm creating now, it is a mixture of black acrylic paint and then also a generous amount of baking soda. We're going to be creating a ceramic paint just to give this a nice kind of chalky finish and overall make it look like a ceramic lamp in the end. Next step, you might have guessed, we are going to be painting the lamp. So I went ahead and I painted absolutely everything underneath where the light bulb goes. So I grabbed the paint and a large paintbrush and I went ahead and I painted the handles, I painted the brass bottom section, all of the green sections, absolutely everywhere that I wanted to kind of achieve a ceramic look and make it look like one full piece, I went ahead and painted with our black paint. And the great thing about mixing and baking soda is it really makes the paint extremely opaque. I don't know if that's the mixture of the baking soda in the paint or what exactly it is, but you can get away with one coat for sure. However, on my particular lamp, I did two coats. So make sure to let it dry in between for about an hour or two and then apply your second coat paint. And that's exactly what I'm doing here. Now this next step is a little bit strange, but it truly is what makes this lamp shine. So what I did was I went outside and I got some dirt and I'm going to be creating some mud that I am then going to be painting on the outside of our lamp. Now I saw somebody do a uh, like terracotta vintage distressed pot tutorial on YouTube a while back. I tried looking for the video everywhere, but I could not find it, but she essentially created this mixture, painted it on top of pots and then let it dry and then wiped off the excess. So that is exactly what I'm doing here. I'm painting a nice coat of our mud mixture onto the outside of our ceramic pot and as you can see once it starts drying the mud will actually kind of like turn into like a chalky dirt consistency and all you have to do is then go ahead and with a washcloth or just your hand which is exactly what I did I just rubbed off any excess dirt because you don't want to bring dirt into your home of course so I'm just rubbing anything off that way it doesn't flake off later and that finishes off your distressed ceramic table lamp.
And our last flip today is actually a furniture piece. So I don't want to hold it up. I'm going to put clips of it over the top as I speak about it. But it is a really stunning chair that I found for only $4, you guys. It was $4, which I thought was such a great price. It has a cane back to it. And it also has a very kind of ornate edging on the top, which I love. The wood finish on this is very, very strange. It's almost like a faux wood look. And it has like black splatters on it for some reason. So I kind of want to switch this up a little bit. And I actually have a perfect place in my living room for this piece and I think I might want to paint it black I'm not entirely sure yet so we'll see how this piece progresses but I got it for four dollars so let's see what I can turn it into and then we're moving into one of my favorite projects here. We are going to be using the chair that I found for only $4.79. And I do want you guys to keep an open mind because this is going in a very particular spot in my living room. So I kind of made it to fit that space. So what I started off by doing was unscrewing the chair seat from the wooden base, I guess you could say. And once I pulled that off, I then wanted to start reupholstering the seat. So I grabbed just a flathead screwdriver and I'm pulling up the old fabric. I actually really love this yellow velvet in combination with the wood tone however it was so beat up like it was even if you sat on it, it started to kind of rip a little bit the foam seat was not in the best condition but don't worry we're going to be covering that up with this really great herringbone fabric i found at joann's in the uh, interior design section so i laid it wrong side up that way the right side is going to be facing towards the table i placed on top of it my seat cushion and i'm going to be cutting around just making sure that i have about six inches of space all the way around so we have enough fabric to pull so starting at one side what i did was i pulled it pretty taut and I added a couple of staples to the side. This is the front of the seat here. You're going to want to use quite a few staples on this just to make sure that all of your fabric is pulled in the right direction. And then I swapped over to the opposite side directly across from where we applied our first staples. And I just wanted to pull that tight as well and add a couple of staples here. That way we at least had one section secured. So then I moved over to the left and right side of the seat and I repeated the same process starting with just a couple of staples on the left side, then pulling the fabric taut on the right side and adding a couple more staples. So I added a staple probably every half inch or so just to ensure that I had a lot of them because I had never reupholstered anything in my life. I'm not even sure if this is how you're supposed to do it. However, it seemed pretty self-explanatory, so I went with the flow. And then around the corners, you're just going to want to pull it and kind of gather the fabric, but you can have it crease on the underside. However, on the actual side, you don't want it to crease at all, which is pretty simple as long as you fold it kind of as it pleats around the corner. You can then staple down the folds and you're good to go. So once you have all of your fabric, stapled down I went ahead and just cut off all of the excess since we don't need that anymore flipped my seat over and this is what was created now keep in mind that the original had like a piping around the edge which kind of created an odd shape with the foam however we're gonna be moving on to the base here so I brought the base outside and I was kind of nervous to spray this black but I really really loved the outcome of it in the end and I am going to be keeping this chair for myself so I personally love the way that it turned out I went ahead and gave it a coat of my favorite matte farmhouse black spray paint by rustoleum this was so satisfying to watch back as well just look how nicely that coats i did two full coats of this just to ensure that it was fully coated but i went all the way around the entire chair and gave two even coats of this spray paint and then all you have to do is just reassemble the seat back onto the base with the four screws that we originally took it out with and that finishes off your brand new chair i am so happy with how this looks in the living room And that guys finish off today's video. I hope that you enjoyed these projects. I absolutely love how they turned out. I'm saying that literally as I don't even know how they turned out because they're all sitting right here, but I'm sure I love them. That's the reason that this video is being posted. So if you like them as well, definitely give this video a thumbs up and let me know which project was your favorite in the comment section below. I would love to know. And yeah, I don't want to keep you guys for much longer. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for new home decor and DIY content every single week. And I will catch you guys in my next one. Bye guys.